there is plenty of ways to avoid that. We completed trial pours before we actually started pouring out on site. So the trial pours consisted of trialing different ways to finish, but using the correct tools, using the correct insulation method will avoid that clumpy, bally and hairy finish on site. Further to that as well is having an approved mix design as well, spoken to or coordinated with the supplier and making sure that your ratio of fibres to cubic metres is correct. Yes, the concrete is more expensive than normal concrete. It's obviously because you've got the fibres in it, but now you're taking away the full component of steel. So manual handling, storage, um, plant to manoeuvre the steel, I guess cutting, which is a safety thing, which you're avoiding that too, which is great. Um, placement, labour, additional labour for the set out. So that's all gone. So once you take out that cost, it's not more expensive. We could complete larger pours in the one shift, um, which meant obviously a reduction in cost because you're pouring more. And also the reason why you can do more pours is because you don't have that interface with steel. So your truck can just drive straight through your site, pour on pour. Post installation, we noticed that the fibercrete had significantly less cracks compared to normal concrete, which is expected with the fibercrete and it's true. Um, therefore your maintenance for your fibercrete is far less. Concrete strength comes from the mix itself and the mix design. So as long as the mix conforms to the standard specifications, then you've got no issues there. The fibre or the e-mesh inside the concrete is there for cracking purposes, but it's also there post install, which will support the load and will act as the steel reinforcement.